This is a video about the explosion in 13th of December 1927 in Hague. This explosion was to have serious consequences in that a few months later, by exploring the mine, 13 officials were killed as well, and they are the ones who are still entombed in the district down there. The port poem is entitled Hague Explosions, 13th of December 1927. In the mine at 10.15, all was quiet it would seem. Change of shifts was taking place. 340 men had left the face. 189 workers travelling in. Night shift working to begin. There were still workers in the mine, completing work on overtime. Three deputies waiting for their men, repeating the process time and again. Deputy Breer waiting for the ride to stop, to greet his men in the pig shop. Bradley and Horrocks were in the mine, working on Bratis after their time. Eight shift hand boys were there that day, waiting in the cabin along with Breer. Sixteen-year-old James Turnbull, who lived on Kells, was a naughty runner who raced on the fells. As he stepped out of the cabin, he was hit with a blast, swept off his feet, flung several yards past. Unconscious for a while, he then awoke, felt he needed to sleep and not get up. Another boy called Horrocks was pulling at him, saying, we need to get away from here, Jim. Then rescuers from Wellington gave them a shout, gathered the boys and led them out. Thrown by the explosion, Bray off his feet rocks. Wrapping a scarf round his mouth, tried to get to Knox, but was driven back by gaseous fumes. He had no light to pierce the gloom. The Wellington rescuers deserve some prayers, all passed on nearing middle age. Tom Burkett won the Edward Medal in 1910 for his efforts to save the Wellington men. Pat McFarland, Hugh McLennan and Alfred Casson were the other heroes who deserve a mention. One homegrown hero deserves a line about his bravery down the mine. William Douglas, though exhausted and gassed, stayed with the belling men after the blast, helping out and acting as guide, reviving the boys staying at their side. Bray checked the boys and saw the raw care, were met by rescuers and led away. The incoming shift riding him by felt a gust, were hit by the blast and enveloped in dust. They regroup their way back up to the shaft and sent for rescuers to get here fast. One long blast and then six short on the colliery horn alerted the town that the pit was torn. Hundreds gathered at the, sea, at the pit banks, worried about relatives searching survivors' ranks. As they were found, the crowd dispersed leaving a handful fearing the worst. The rescue teams with breathing apparatus met survivors and checked their status. On arrival at the explosion source, they sadly recovered the bodies of Knox, Fitzsimmons and Bradley. They searched for Oryx all around, but with fire starting, he was not found. The rescue teams tried to fight the fire but despite their efforts, flames were getting higher. After hours of toil, when dangers lurk, they realised their actions would not work. A decision to seal the fire was made with care, behind brick walls to starve it of air. The fire sealed off behind brick walls, closely monitored by one and all. Men out of work for months we learn, pressures mount for their return. But the fiery air sealed in the mine makes no sound and bides its time. Thank you.